Hello. I am only on my second cup, but stuff has happened. So what's up? We got a good brain picture. I like your brain. I wanna see it in high depth. A team of researchers has spent a bunch of years working on like super high definition MRI technology. They took a scan of a mouse's brain and it's like a really, really, really high def scan. Like really high. Like 64 million times the definition of a typical MRI. The detail level gets down to five microns, which is small. And while this is like probably not coming to your local MRI imaging center anytime soon, it's still pretty exciting. Here's a quote from the author of the paper whose name I'm putting on the screen because I don't have it in my notes right now. It is something that is truly enabling. We can start looking at neurodegenerative diseases in an entirely different way. Science is cool. That is all. You know what's coming next, and I don't want to talk about it either. But we have two, like, really stupid shooting situations to talk about. First, a 16-year-old boy named Ralph Paul Jarl, which is an incredible name, has been shot after going to the wrong house and ringing the doorbell. He was supposed to be picking up his siblings, but he went to the wrong house and rang the doorbell and the homeowner immediately shot him in the head. And then after he collapsed, shot him in the arm. Thankfully, since Ralph is a much stronger spirit than the person who shot him, he got up, ran around, went to three different houses until he found somebody to try to help him and then collapsed. Ralph is alive. He survived the encounter. He went to the hospital with life threatening conditions, but he pulled through and is now recovering at home. This is because Ralph is an actual badass and this never should have happened in the first place, but hey, Ralph, you're fucking awesome. Shortly after that, like less than a day later, a 20 year old woman was murdered by somebody for a very similar circumstance. A car full of a bunch of friends was lost when driving around a particularly rural area and they turned down a road that happened to be someone's driveway and the person got all upset and shot at the car without warning. The car was actively leaving the premises. It was, it was driving away, but one of the bullets happened to hit the woman that was driving and she died. The man then refused to come out of his house and was like, ah, no, you can't, you can't take me coppers. Uh, and then he was charged with murder. There is not a lot to be lighthearted about here, but if you have any takeaway from the story, please don't let it be that the right answer is to constantly be afraid and aggressive towards everyone who's a stranger. Be defensive, be aware of your surroundings, but the assumption that everyone is out to get you is how we end up in this weird, aggressive, rugged individualism place to begin with. Bad people definitely exist, but your average neighbor is probably not actively plotting how to break into your house and harm you. Your average neighbor. Let's, let's pick up the vibes. Let's pick them up. Accessibility in video games. It's cool. Don't swipe away, don't swipe away, I'm not done. If you are not familiar with the Horizon games, they are a game where you play as a woman in a post-apocalyptic world where humans are now tribal and the world is taken over by robot dinosaurs. I love video games. Anyway, the second game has an expansion coming out that's going to include a whole lot more underwater stuff, but the studio has acknowledged that some people have a true phobia of like the crushing death. So to alleviate this, they're adding a mode that effectively reduces the pressure of being underwater, like quite literally. It grants access to like an infinite oxygen upgrade and also makes it so that there's less visual stuff going on to make it feel more claustrophobic when you're underwater. This can make the game a lot more approachable for people who might otherwise not be okay with it. That's really cool. Accessibility in video games is getting better over time. It's not perfect, but there's also a lot of discussion about what is accessibility versus like changing how a game works and what is too far. And the answer is, I mean, it's, it's up to the individual developer and their community to, to know. You may recall when Elden Ring came out, there was a whole bunch of discussion about whether video games should all be made accessible and if a game series like Dark Souls or Elden Ring that's kind of hard by design should be made accessible. That's a whole can of worms and I'm not gonna get into that right now, but it's pretty nice to see that there are AAA game developers that are really considering this kind of stuff. And, and I mean, at the end of the day, it also gets them more sales. So, you know, if you are trans, you should probably not be on Twitter because Twitter does not care about trans people and they're making that very very clear. Twitter has removed wording from their hateful content policy that explicitly says that you cannot dead name and intentionally misgender trans people. This is almost definitely because Elon Musk is still salty that his wife left him and started dating a trans woman. He has been quite loudly anti-trans ever since then. But presumably this change makes it a lot easier for Twitter to cater to their target audience, which is just people posting the absolute dumbest shit you've ever seen on the internet. Don't say mean things about Amazon, y'all. An analyst put out a thing saying, hey, it looks like Amazon Prime sales are kind of plateauing and maybe they're hitting the upper limit of all the sales they can make with Amazon Prime. And so some organizations picked up this analyst's work and was like, oh, hey, yeah, Amazon's sort of plateauing. And Amazon didn't like that. Their spokesperson was like, how dare you? We are growing. We grow every quarter. We have infinite growth. We've solved the puzzle. I don't know why Amazon's PR rep became a pirate at the end there. So anyway, tread carefully when you're dunking on Amazon sales numbers, but it also doesn't really matter because like they have already dominated the world anyway. Lightning round. A Ben & Jerry's store in Vermont is unionizing, and it's actually kind of nice because Ben & Jerry's is supportive of that. Netflix is ending their DVD mail service after 
several years. Here's the weather. A parking garage in New York City has collapsed, killing one person and creating a massive pile of rubble and cars. Universal Media Group got all mad and delisted a song that used AI to replicate Drake and The Weeknd's vocals. A grand jury has decided not to charge cops that murdered Jalen Walker, the man that was shot dozens of times despite being unarmed. Contrastingly, Derek Chauvin, the man who murdered George Floyd, had his murder conviction upheld by an appeals court. Fox will be settling their lawsuit with Dominion Voting Systems after lying about the election, uh, and they're settling for $787 million. Fox has quietly acknowledged that yes, lies were made. The state of New Jersey has had to pause their electric vehicle rebate program because it was too popular. In gaming news, Concerned Ape is now working on Stardew Valley 1.6. And finally, Joseph Staten, the guy who recently left Microsoft after working on Halo for a very long time, has joined Netflix to make a brand new AAA title under them. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, share, and don't forget that I'm going to be live tonight on Twitch every Wednesday. My name is Endeavorance. I'll be back on Friday. Take care and be well.